Hello, Matt. What's up, Rick? <laughs> How you doing, man? Good, buddy. Second time back in here this week. We're crazy. You must have I've a been, hot topic. I've been busy, man. Did you know that I invented a telepathically induced air freshener? You did? That's what I've been working on. I mean, it makes sense if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when does a joke become a dad joke? Oh, that's, I don't know. When it becomes apparent. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like it. It's a lot of pressure, these dad jokes and remembering them. I know. I have to like read it and then run sit down. I'm like, oh, dad, I forgot the punchline. I got to read it again. <laughs> I have so many. That's the problem. And I don't have them on deck. Plus, we're busy. So it's like you, know, you switch gears from like a really serious business meeting and then I jump in here and I've got to like have one on deck and ready to roll. It's good. Keep it light, man. That's right. Gotta have fun, right? That's right. This is what? Is it fitness? What are we selling? Fitness? It's our third core value humor with a little crazy yeah so i'll just have you guys know that before we started the podcast matt called me a grumpy old man it kind of is this week i'm just throwing it, it out there you know, i gotta keep him in check so, well that's true actually i appreciate that <laughs> i don't you don't realize what you're putting out there but yeah i got a little bit of that i mean it's not there's other people here you know oh god <laughs> <laughs> matt. apparently matt goes feelings hurt everyone so <laughs> Oh, he doesn't like me. <laughs> All right, anyway, let's get on with this <laughs> madness. <laughs> Welcome to the Alloy Culture Podcast. My um, mic on, or did you turn mine off? Again? I'm about to turn that shit off from now until the end of time. You're done. You're fired. You're like, I don't even get paid for this. I'm like, that's what makes it hard to fire you. <laughs> like like uh, Kramer on Seinfeld when he took that non-paid like, internship. That's what makes it so hard. Yeah, he fired him. He's like, but I don't even really work here. He's like, that's what makes it so hard. Oh, I have another joke for you. All right, shoot. <laughs> So my boss told me to have a good day. Yeah. And I went home. <laughs> Bastard. That's impersonal. That's kind of personal. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what we're going to talk about today? No, you don't actually. I have no idea. Because Grandpa over here has been busy, busy thinking of podcast topics. But now, honestly, um, this one is going to be short and sweet. Right. There's not a lot to say about it because it's sort of self-explanatory, but it is an interesting lens in the way to look at things. So have you ever heard of, uh, you probably have actually, have you ever heard of Cantor's Law? I, not off the top of my head. Maybe I have. I don't know. You I, say a lot of things and maybe we've talked about it. <laughs> you should listen. <laughs> so Cantor's Law, actually, uh, this was brought to me by John Farkas, who's one of our. Oh, yeah. We talk about this. I yeah, got it. It's yeah, coming yeah. back. All right. That a boy. You get it. Just dig deep. Got to get deep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, John Farkas, who's one of our, he's a good friend and he's also a, you know, franchisee multi-unit. So he bought four franchises. Shout out to John. And, um, he sent over one day this quote and it was from a Harvard professor. Um, and her name is Rosabeth Moss Cantor. So it's been termed Cantor's law. Basically in its basic essence, what the law means is everything looks infinitely harder when you're in the middle, right? Oh, yes. And if you think about any kind of a process, and we're, let's talk about it through the lens of franchising, when you first come up with the idea mm -hmm. of a project or whatever, let's say you're buying into a franchise, it, the excitement is like, you know, through the roof, right? And you've also more than likely painted a picture of what this thing is going to look like, you know, when you have, you know, multiple locations open profitably or whatever that is, or you're right. selling at some point, you've got this great exit, right, for mm -hmm. multiple or whatever, whatever your dream is helping your community, all those great things. But the reality is everyone loves the excitement of starting a new project. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves a happy ending. And somewhere in between, there's going to be a lot of lumps and bumps. And so what the middle typically looks like of between the start and the, you know, again, the grand finish is two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. Right. Yeah. And I think, to keep yourself from giving up, which a lot of people do in the middle, um, because they only have two lenses on the thing, the excitement, you know, that we've talked about passion versus, mm -hmm. you know, what, where is the passion lie? And is it, does it really help in your business in some way? Yes. In some ways it hurts. Right. So I think if you look at the excitement of getting started and the, the amazing picture you've painted of what this could look like, if you do it well, in the middle is a lot of hard work and no one wants to think about that, but you should, you should steal yourself, if you will, against the hard work that you're going to have to do mm -hmm. to be successful. Yeah. And if you expect it to be lumpy, right? Two steps forward, one step back. 
whatever that may be, then you're going to be much better prepared to survive whatever that is. So this could be almost any, like you want to start losing weight, the thought of it, like you finally took that first, the hardest part, you, you say you came in and you joined an alloy and you're going to start exercising and you're going to knock down that first habit and then you're going to start eating better and you got this plan, right? Awesome. And then you've got this vision of what you're going to feel and look like in a year from now if all these things stick, right? Well, between the excitement of getting started and the year from now, there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen in sure. between. You're going to, you know, you're going to get a sore knee or you're going to, you know, you're going to fall off the wagon and you're going to have a wedding or a bunch of fun holiday events in a row and you're going to gain two and lose three and then gain four and lose seven. It's like, it's going to happen, right? Expecting it to be smooth sailing and a linear progression from the excitement of starting to this slight up, upward trajectory, trajectory over time until you, you know, whatever that panacea of, of beings is happens, right, is unrealistic. And I think you should expect peaks and valleys. Yeah, I mean, I, I imagine you uh, you probably have these conversations with uh, people looking to buy a franchise, right, right out of the gate. Yeah, you and I think help them um, with expectations on this, right? Well, a hundred percent. And I think um, you know we're better served again stealing people against, right? You know what what it's going to look like in the middle because there's going to be parts of any project that are difficult, right? And so it might be. I mean, shoot, we can talk about you know um, things that have just slight hiccups that happen like, okay, your city is all backed up because it turns out that it's in fast growth mode because people are moving there, you know, as a result of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Like a Nashville, right? Or yeah. in Austin and permitting is going to be jacked in a city that's like that. So you're all excited. You know, maybe you go out and you start looking for real estate and it's like, Oh my goodness, it's a crowded town right now. And landlords are, you know, they have these interesting little dirty little tricks where maybe they hold your LOI and they shop it against other LOIs or whatever, right? It's like, all right, well, it's nature of the beast. It's fast growing city. It's still going to be a great place to do business. You're still going to reach your ultimate goal, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not like, oh, I'm going to find a place within a week. I mean, the landlord's going to be really nice and responsive and I'm going to have the lease done in you know, three weeks. And then I'm, you know, everything permitting is going to go super smooth and blah, blah, blah. It sometimes works out that way. But I think you should prepare yourself for lumps and bumps, right? Yeah. Maybe maybe it's me. I don't know. Is there anybody that comes to there, like, they talk to you and they just think it's going to be the easiest thing ever? <laughs> um, no, but I think we do a good – I would say that, if, if anything, we do a pretty darn good job of telling people, hey, you know, I know you're super excited. There's going to be a little bit of hurry up and wait, certainly in the build-out process, right? Yeah. Um, and even down the road, let's say you're, you know, you, you finally get your facility open, you get through pre-sale, which is a ton of like a blitz of hard work for, yeah. you know, 10 to 12 weeks of like, oh, then you got to stabilize the clientele over the next few months, right? Get everybody into their time slots. You have to adjust emotionally to becoming an entrepreneur, the risk that you're taking, the fact that you, you know, you might have to work really hard for a window of time like you never have in your life, right? That's a lot. And so I think we do a really good job of telling people they do hear us, but then experiencing it is different than hearing it. I don't think if you haven't ever been through it, you're not quite sure yeah. what it's going to feel and look like. And so I think if you just prepare yourself yeah. for lumps and bumps and, and hard work, and again, it's weight loss, it's opening a business, it's a million and one different projects, right? You want to do anything meaningful, it's going to have some hard work in it. So the inception of the idea is going to be wildly exciting and the painting the picture of the end game, also wildly exciting. Cantor's law says all the shit in the middle is going to seem seem horrible, even though it's not, because yeah. it's not going to be a linear progression from one high to the other. You're going to have peaks and valleys. Definitely makes me want to buy a franchise more though, because those br <laughs> those those bumps in the road are probably a lot worse. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> infinitely worse if you if we haven't smoothed out 99 right. percent of them for you. That's a great point. And also, what better way to basically procure a team of coaches mm -hmm. that's been doing it for 30 years who can say, look, yeah, prepare yourself for this. And then to have someone to get in their ear and be like, man, you know, I talked to a guy the other day and he's like, he's barely started. I mean, it's like a weekend and he's like, oh, I'm so excited. You know, I feel like I just, I don't have anything to do. I'm like, bro, it's a week. You know, you knew what this was going to happen. And we both laughed, right? right? And he's like, I know, I know. I'm just super excited. I'm like, all right, well. Steal yourself against the fact that you're going to have hurry up and wait, right. flurry of activity, hurry up and wait, flurry of activity. That's the nature in opening a brick and mortar business. So, and you know, we've done it a million times. So, but it's just nice for them to your point to have a franchise partner that they can talk to about these things yeah. and we can realign expectations for them. Otherwise 
it's perception is reality and it can seem like mm-hmm. everything is so hard at these certain junctures of time. And I'm not saying that like opening a franchise is really hard. It just depends on how you're organized, how you think, what your past experiences are, what your expectations are. So I think we do a good job of setting the expectations. Even with that, I think we're all human and we go through it. I go through it. You go through it. We all do, right? Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I even thought of, like, okay, let's talk about kids. You think of having a kid. It's, like, amazing. And you think about, like, your kids are grown and gone and you have grandkids. Great. Well, like, 20, 30 years in between that. Yeah. And there's some ups and downs. I'm in right in the middle. And I can tell you there's not think about having another kid. <laughs> Cantor's law says Matt is getting a vasectomy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm out. You know. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> no way. I'm sorry, Mallory, if you're listening. I yeah. just, we just but I mean, like, decided yeah, I mean, for probably, you. Probably, yeah. no, she decided. <laughs> yeah, good. She's out too. It's, it's good to but be I mean, on the same that's page. That's a good way to look at it because it's, you know, imagine, you know, how it's exciting in the middle of it. I'm in the middle of it. Kids are older. You know, maybe you'll have some grandkids here soon. Yep. And you'll probably be like, oh, man, this is awesome. You get to right. relive it. You know, it, well, I'm yeah. in a spot now with my kids. They're grown. They're low maintenance. They're like squared away humans. I'm like, ah, oh, this is amazing, right? <laughs> But somewhere between there and 25 years later, it was not always that way. You know, there was peaks and valleys and ups and downs and everybody has those, but that's Cantor's law. And I think that you should expect the middle to be lumpy right. and the middle always seems harder than it is on any project. So sorry, again, it's lumpy kids. I know. <laughs> Daddy still loves you, even though I'm a shit bag. <laughs> so I should have said that. <laughs> If you're listening, I love you. <laughs> That's right. They don't listen. <laughs> yeah. I always wonder that when I listen to a podcast where guys are just really going off, you know, and swearing and doing all these things, which I know some people don't like it. I'm not offended by it. It's just words. It gives them meaning, whatever. But um, I always wonder, like, gosh, I wonder if their kids listen, because some of it's pretty raunchy if, yeah. you, if it goes there. And I'm like, oof, I couldn't do it. You know, just too many people My out there. My wife, probably worse than anything they'd hear, so. <laughs> it's just worse around the house. <laughs> Feisty redhead, man, flying off. I know. I have I, seen my kids. This, this is cool. Like, my kids will be like, and I'm going to talk to our marketing team about this, but they'll be like playing a game on their iPad and our ad will pop up. Yeah. yeah it happens like, I don't all know the why time. it's marketing to them, but you know. <laughs> well, it happens all the time. Like I'll have people be like, hey, hey, and they'll see me like in my neighborhood or just anywhere. Right. You know, and they're that's like. That's the guy. That's the guy. That's Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, there's a guy in my, uh, that just moved into my neighborhood and um, he hit me up on Facebook and was like, hey, you know, I'm in the fitness space. Mm-hmm. Also, um, he used to own a bunch of gyms in Chicago and ran corporate wellness facilities as well and then covid just wiped him out so we just moved into the neighborhood so he came over yesterday and we just sat around you know drank hung out hell yeah and uh just talked shop but he was like i knew i knew you from somewhere and he was like you know we talked and this is the creepiness of the internet he's like we talked and then like um you know wasn't too long after that i got one of your ads for your franchise i'm like whoa phone was listening that's right always but yeah i mean we're on tiktok youtube you know, like Andrea can be playing a game like a Wordle or something on her phone. And there's a TikTok like, of you dancing. There <laughs> that pops up my big old melon. <laughs> She's Alloy. so proud. <laughs> I've threatened to do that because the, uh, the, uh, our marketing team's always pushing me. It's like, I'm a big proponent of if you don't have anything to say, don't say anything. You know what I mean? Right. And some of this, um, I always call it motivation porn where it's like people just on there just saying things because you just have to pump out content. And it's, I don't want to be that guy. I want to have something that is on my mind that I think is relevant that can help the audience or can certainly help our franchise candidates with their lens on things. Um, but yeah, they're always pushing me just to be like, well, it just anything, just anything. anything. Just go on there, say anything. You're right. Yeah. Like, All right. Careful what you ask for. I'm going to bust out a TikTok dance pretty soon. Take probably. it down. Yeah, so you're crashing the company. I'm like, I thought, I thought you said anything. Yeah, not that. Yeah. Anything but that. Sorry. Yeah, that's a bad look. Yeah. I'm sure they'll coach me around that. But yeah, they're trying to push me to do it. You know how it is. It's like, ugh. I don't Can't wait. Really? Can't wait to see it. Man. I'm pretty good. I used to be on a break dance team. I know. We've talked about it. So it's, it's on the podcast. Yeah. But I mean, I, I was legit. I wasn't like a, just a fake break dance. A, a was fake, that 40 fake dancer. years ago? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, maybe things were different back then. <laughs> All the movies were in black and white with no sound. <laughs> we moved in those really herky jerky movements. I had a little weird mustache and a little Charlie Chaplin hat. But I was still good at break dancing. Like 11 year olds with a mustache? <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was a hairy little fella. All right, listen. Cantor's Law is going to tell you guys. And this is your expectation. I don't care what you're what you're embarking on. You're going to be very excited at the start. You're going to paint a picture. It's perfect at the end. I think it is common sense, but I'm telling you, it's not as common to really believe it and to prepare for it. 
everything in the middle is going to seem infinitely more difficult than it's supposed to. If you expect it and you know it's going to be lumpy and you steel yourself against the ups and downs, two steps forward, one step back, but you're still making that slow progress, that's the way it's supposed to work. And by the way, if getting to that panacea at the end wasn't difficult, you wouldn't appreciate it as much. You just wouldn't. I mean, that's the way that we're chemically wired is to, to have a problem in front of us, to put out effort, whether it's emotional, physical, spiritual, whatever that is, to solve said problem. And when you do that, that's the brain science. That's happiness at the end of the day. So, I mean, it sounds silly, but you should embrace the middle because when you look back on it, the middle part will be the real good good, right? That's the juice. That's the right. stuff you'll remember as the best parts. Anybody can get excited at the start. That's mm -hmm. just, what that's an emotion, right? Everybody loves a happy ending like we talked about. But if you can learn to appreciate the work that happens in the middle, you're in a good spot. And I think that's what you need to prepare yourself for. See, in you any are project. a motivational speaker. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look, on that note, listen, short and sweet, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry for the swearing that Matt induced, but that's just his style. He's just sort of that kind of guy. So I will see you guys next week. And Matt, as much as I don't appreciate you, I really do appreciate you. Word. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>